Today, we're talking about a high impact security vulnerability that affects Rust, Python, and many other programming languages on Windows. The vulnerability we're going to be talking about is this recent CVE 2024-24576. And this is a 10 out of 10 critical vulnerability. This is the absolute worst rating that a security vulnerability can get. Taking a look at how the Rust team is responding to this, they of course put out a security advisory and have patched it in the way that they see fit. And the way they describe it, it sounds really bad. It sounds like a 10 out of 10 vulnerability. In short, when you're invoking a batch file on Windows using their command API, they say that they don't properly escape the arguments when invoking that batch file. If exploited, that means an attacker would be able to execute arbitrary shell commands as the current user. The approach to mitigation that they took is a perfectly reasonable one. They basically updated their API to error if it looks like you're giving an input that looks like it could be exploited. Thankfully, someone has already gone out and checked the status of other programming languages and noted whether or not they're affected. And here's where we start to see something a little bit fishy. We have nine affected programming languages here. And note that although Java is the only one noted as saying they won't fix it, in total, four of the other ones just say they'll have a documentation update, which basically means they are also not fixing it. They're just documenting it somehow. That's kind of a weird take for five independent programming languages to have on a 10 out of 10 critical security vulnerability, don't you think? And no, it's not just because these languages don't care about Windows. They care. Let's dive into the code and see how this vulnerability might not be the five alarm fire that it was made out to be. It's only an issue if, number one, you're running on Windows, number two, your program is accepting untrusted inputs, and number three, your program is passing those untrusted inputs to a subprocess that's trying to call a batch file. That means you have to be running a .bat or .cmd, or a file without an extension because that could also resolve to a batch file. Here I have a batch file that's just supposed to echo out its arguments line by line. Yes, ChatGPT can write batch files. Although looking at this program really makes you wonder who is still writing batch files. Anyway, the normal way that this is supposed to work is if I have a normal input and I run the file, then we can see that it just echoes out uh, whatever the input was. But if I give it a specially crafted evil input and run it again, we see that it actually pops up my calculator. So instead of printing out the argument ampersand calc.exe like it did in the previous example, it ran the executable calc.exe. The surface level reason this is happening is because ampersand is the special command line character to say, do this command and then do this next command. But this is such a simple example. How could this possibly have not been known in the past? Well, spoiler alert, this has been known for a long time. And while there's no question that this is confusing behavior, according to the Windows documentation, this is a feature, not a bug. Normally, when I use subprocess to call an executable, in this case, another instance of Python, the arguments in the list are passed as arguments to that executable. The executable can do whatever it wants with these arguments. In this case, interpret this string as a Python program to run, and then pass the rest of the arguments to that Python program. The ampersand and echo have no special meaning unless they happen to mean something to the Python executable, like the dash C did. The dash C is a command line argument that it knows, oh hey, the next thing is the command I'm supposed to run. However, most programming languages offer you a kind of convenience escape hatch that allows you to run the command in a shell as opposed to running the Python executable directly. In Python, you do that by specifying shell equals true. Because the actual command being run is a shell, special characters like the ampersand are now interpreted by the shell instead of passed to the Python executable. So the shell will read this as run Python and run echo. When we run it, we see that that means Python does not receive the ampersand echo lol. Instead, Python runs and then echo lol runs. Because of the dangers of potentially providing a malicious user access to a shell, programming languages do a pretty good job at warning users to never, ever, ever pass untrusted input with shell equals true. So I think if your average programmer sees code like this, where you're taking untrusted inputs and then directly passing that into a subprocess.run with shell equals true, I think we intuitively understand that this is just dangerous by default. We shouldn't be doing this. 
And indeed, if I run this with the ampersand calc.exe, we see that it does a little speed test of nothing and then opens the calculator. But with shell equals false, which is also the default, so if I just didn't specify anything, then when we run it, we'll see that it actually speed tests invalid syntax, so we get an error as opposed to um, getting hacked. And now we come full circle back to the CVE to understand why people are upset about this. Of course, if we have shell equals true and we pass untrusted inputs, then we should expect a security vulnerability. The calc.exe got executed. But that is not what the CVE is about. The CVE is about what happens when shell equals false. Even with shell equals false, when we run this program, the calculator still pops up. Well, that really seems like a bug in the programming language, right? Why did it interpret it as if it was in a shell anyway? And this is the point where people start pointing fingers, mostly at the programming languages because they're the ones that wrote the run function, right? Why is this a mistake that nine different programming languages made? Well, it's because, again, this is technically a feature, not a bug. Here's the section of code from the CPython source code in the subprocess library that actually is used to create a process on Windows. So it's basically just calling out to this Windows API create process function. Let's take a look at that. And here's the implementation of that. If we scroll down, what does it actually do? Ultimately, it just calls this built-in create process w function, which is actually part of the Windows API. So this has got to be the place where it happens, right? Whatever we're passing in here has to be wrong. So where did that come from? Well, of course, it came back from uh, this call here, which means where did these args come from? These are the args that we're passing to the create process function. If we scroll up just a little bit, we can see that it's not that Python forgot to escape something. Here is the call where it actually does the escaping. You might think, well, I guess they just must have made a mistake in this list to command line function. But looking at the documentation and looking at the implementation, they're following Microsoft's exact instructions and they follow them correctly. Python and probably all the other languages too didn't make a simple mistake parsing command line arguments. If anything, the real issue has more to do with the semantics of how Windows runs batch files in the first place. Taking a look at the example again, what does it mean to run a batch file? A batch file is not an executable. How can I run it? Well, when you ask Windows to run a batch file, it says, oh, that's not executable, but I know how to run one of those. I'll run it in a shell. So even if you said shell equals false from Python's end, it still runs the command in a shell because that's just what it means to run a batch file on Windows. It means to run it in a shell. But now if we look at it this way, where we're explicitly passing untrusted input into a shell, it no longer feels like a CVE. It feels like I should have validated my inputs. The confusion comes from the fact that the escaping that Python does is escaping for Windows, not escaping specifically for the command prompt. Just like Python has its own escape sequences, like backslash n for a new line, the command prompt has its own escape sequences. And just like subprocess.run doesn't try to escape or quote your backslash n when you run python.exe, it also doesn't try to escape your command prompt specific escape sequences when you run those. It's just extra confusing because you might not realize that you're asking to run a command prompt when you run a batch file. While you could take the Rust approach and try to automatically escape arguments to batch files, a realistic compromise is for Microsoft to publish documentation on how to properly escape arguments to a command prompt, and then to have languages implement and provide some kind of batch escape function. Additionally, a lot of the confusion stems around the signature of this create process w function that Python and all the other programming languages have to call on Windows. This create process w function is pretty much the only way to create new processes on Windows. It would be a lot nicer if there was a version of this function that took an array of strings, which is what programs are expecting, so that there wouldn't be any confusion around the escaping that we have to do just to pass to this function versus the escaping that we have to do in order to escape arguments that the command prompt is expecting. If you look at the equivalent code for Linux, you see that it actually uses this exec v family of functions. The exec v family of functions takes an array instead of a single string, and this CVE isn't an issue on Linux.